First of all, congratulations. For me, it was so exciting to be able to present this film at the festival um, to our audiences. So a big thank you to David and to Netflix. Um, and also to both of you for being here with us tonight. Um, I'm going to start with the two actresses um, because um, uh, I mean, the, both, the, both of your characters, I think, are so so moving and compelling. And I know for Yalitza, it's her first film, but Marina, you're a great stage actress and have television and film experience as well. So I was wondering first if you could talk a little bit about kind of the casting process and how you came to the project. Um, so Marina, we can start with you. Sure. Hey, well, it was a very long casting process, the, the longest I've ever been, and the most different. Because uh, from, the, from the beginning, I could sense that it was not about uh, how could I uh, create a character that was who I really was. Uh, they, they were asking questions about my life, about who my small details, about my biography. So I could sense that it was something different. And then it was uh, like four months on an audition and then another one and another one. And just until the end, I learned it was going to be directed by Alfonso Cuaron. You didn't know that. No, and I met him at the very end of the process. And then we, we, then we did a scene that it was a scene that's in the film, but it was, wasn't complete because of the way we worked. He didn't want us to have information about what, what the characters were going to be going through until the very moment. And essentially, you're playing the role of his mother. So could you talk a little bit about that? Yes, um, this, this film com comes out 90% out of Alfonso's memories. He's talking about his own childhood. These are real life characters. Uh, Sofia is based upon his mother and Bill upon Ivo, that is his other mother, the woman that, that brought him up. And yes, I, 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 I knew it was his mother. He talked about her, about all the, all the details he thought that were important and that happened in, his, in her, her life. But just everything I needed to know that happened just before we start the, the story begins. So we didn't have any information about what was going to happen.
because I didn't even know if this could be human trafficking. <laughs> and it's not because it's not common at all that in my community we have any castings. But well, I said, okay, I'll go, and I went. And then after some time, I was told that the director was going to be at Corso Coron. But to me, it was the same because I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know he was such a great uh, master in what he does. But the minute I met him, I felt totally trust. I felt he would be my friend like forever. And I decided to go ahead and do the casting process in Mexico City. At first, I thought I, was, I had been selected. But after some time, I got a call. And I finally met Marina. And Alfonso invited us both to participate in the film. And I didn't know what to say at first. But as I was doing nothing by then, I said, OK. <laughs> I was looking at the two of you, you shot, from what I read, in chronological order, over 180 days, which is, oh, it's not that many. Okay, <laughs> that is just crazy. <laughs> but in chronological order, um, and you, like you said, Marina, you didn't know what was next. You didn't, did you ever see the full script, or you were just given it scene by scene? Or what was that process? No, we never, we never saw it. it. There was a script, and everything is up to the date, and I think from what we just saw. But we didn't have, and he will deliver the scenes really different to each actor. He will always talk individually, and then he will put it all together. Sometimes he would give some dialogues the day before. <coughs> that was not very frequent. But then he would change things again, while we were on set. Uh, so we were constantly dealing with the unexpected and, and with uh, accidents and things we had to solve at, at the very moment. And I think that gave this um, real life feeling, I think, the film has. Okay, and I would like both of you to talk about developing both kind of the chemistry between the two of you, but also with the children in the film, because it, it does feel so authentic. La convivencia que teníamos fuera del set en esos momentos de espera pues nos ayudó también a conocernos y pues aparte de eso tenían como una voz permitían esta hermosa conexión. Well, I think uh, that's the way it looks in Montevideo because that's how it was in real life. We had a waiting time during the process of shooting, so we were able to spend time together and get to know each other. And with the children, it was really easy because they're adorable and they allowed for this beautiful relationship to start and grow. And David, I'm going to ask, how were you cast? How did you come to the project? How did you come to the project? And how did participants get involved? We came to the project, I think, in the United States. about uh, three years ago. We were in London together at, at the same time, and uh, uh, he came to me with, with sort of a basic outline of what, what it was that he wanted to do, and was interested to know if this film would like to be involved in ultimately that uh, uh, helped produce and, and, and finance the movie. And so that, that was, it was, it was clear from the very beginning um, how confident he was that he was ready to make this story. We've been thinking about it for many years. Right? He said that he was thinking about it for about 15 or 16 years, but he finally got to the stage in his own sort of development as, a, as an artist that he felt that he could really he could, he could make it. And, and for us, um, those of you who don't know participant, participant is a company that's a English company, um, um, the power of storytelling, and, but, but really storytelling is a as a means of, of contributing to positive uh, social change in the world. And, and so for when he, when he relayed the story to me, you know, I just felt that this was a story that would have almost a universal um, uh, um, uh, 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 resonance for audiences around the world. And it would be incredible, just as personal as it was for him, that people would see in themselves the story, the, the story as well. And that to me is, you know, can't, can't change the world if you don't like each other. 
And so, uh, so I just felt it was a very, very compassionate. And so then we went through a period of time um, uh, uh, where, uh, where he sort of showed me um, various stages of treatment, uh, which was written in Spanish, he didn't speak Spanish. Uh, so you know, somebody who works with the company who does speak Spanish, so that's how I, how, I, how I began to see the, the, the story on the page. And then ultimately, um, gave us or gave me a screenplay, and it was just it was you know, it was in the it was in the it was in the words mm -hmm. in the beginning. And uh, what Marina was discussing or was mentioning was, which is an, an amazing form of making a movie and, and completely original, is that he um, did not give any of the actors the screenplay, and so every single day uh, they they shot in continuity. So it was every day they were telling the story, and every day they were told what was happening in that day in the life of their characters, and uh, which has never, to my knowledge, ever really been done before. And, and it's just an indication of how personal and, and how I think how ready he was to make the movie. So we were, you know, Alfonso calls you and says, "If I can make a movie with you, you try not to say no." <laughs> I think one of, I mean, the beauty of this film is both in kind of the power of the storytelling, um, but also, I mean, the images are just exquisite, and the sound design, of course, is amazing. And um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about, about the production side of it, because um, the house was essentially constructed kind of to mirror the home that he grew up in, is this correct? And then there's just extreme like attention to period detail. Well, the, the, the Mexico City that you see in the movie doesn't exist today. Um, uh, and so they were unbelievably careful uh, about recreating uh, the city as, as closely as they could. And that went all the way into the construction of the house. And the house is, a, is, a, is an almost exact reproduction of the house that he grew up in. Um, and about three quarters of the furniture um, is actually reclaimed from relatives that they've been given away wow. to that they've kept over the years. Um, uh, if you look really, really closely at some point, when, if you see the movie again, uh, some of the pictures on the wall of our Alfonso and his family. Um, uh, and so it, it's an, it's, it, is, it is a movie about memories. Uh, it's a movie about obviously his memories, but also Lebo's memory, um, who spent, uh, who's still alive. And, lives in their house in Mexico City um, with Alfonso's sister. And um, uh, so he, it was just incredibly painstaking. And, and one of the beauties of it is, uh, and, uh, and Marie and Pizza um, experience this every day, is but if you look at the way the film is shot, right, it's actually, they, they did an amazing thing. They created sort of a framework around the house and above the house. Right, so that they were able to take the camera and essentially effectively shoot through the house. Right? So you've got, you've got cameras that, can, that, that began outside on the frame and literally go through the house. And keep in mind that Alfonso is not only the director, he's also the writer, he's the producer, and he's also the editor, and he's the director of photography. Um, uh, um, <laughs> And it's just, it just it just goes to show you what a great artist can accomplish, right? And and he it took him 15 years to visualize it, and he saw the results of that. Well, I mean, going back to that domestic space and like that very specific time period, I was also wondering when, for Marina and for Yalita, what it was like to in, in, inhabit that, that space and that time. Um, and then also wanted to, related to what you're saying, is kind of how involved or not was Lebo in in kind of, in production. Bueno, en mi casa no, no conocí esa época de México, pero el ver cómo reconstruyeron cada espacio y se veía tan real, era como transportarme a pensado y pues disfrutaba de algunos momentos que vivíamos dentro de la, de la casa, como convivencia con los niños, verlos 
realmente jugando o ver a una familia a, en la hora de la comida realmente conociéndose. Era muy hermoso vivir todo eso. Well, I didn't get to see this time, this era of Mexico City, but it was beautiful to see how they reconstruct or rebuild this space that looks so real. And it transported you to the past, and it was great to be able to live that and enjoy it. For instance, to see the children playing around, replaying, it was beautiful, as well as this scene where they are having lunch or dinner in the table all together, spending time together. I really liked it very much and felt it was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. well, I was a child in the late 70s and early 80s, so I, most of the things that are there are, are absolutely related to my own childhood. So yes, I, I, there was a moment when I started realizing that I was working, that my, that my acting work was being done with my own memories. The day started also to unfold in in a very in, in fluent way. Like they were coming and coming and coming. And I think Alfonso, in a way, he never told me that he expected this, but he knew that this could happen. And uh, and it's been happy. It happened also when I saw the film. It's it's almost as if something that was 